So the general theory of hyperthermia and how it works is actually quite straightforward. We use ultrasound technology to heat the tumor to approximately 106 to 109 degrees Fahrenheit or 41 to 43 degrees Celsius. The reason why that seems to be a sweet spot is that it helps to increase the blood flow to the tumor. And with it, it carries chemotherapy deep into the center of the tumor. In addition, radiation works much better in a high oxygen environment. And so again, we're able to bring blood and oxygen to the entire tumor, but most importantly to the center. Because we're giving the tumor a super fever, we have no adverse effects on normal cells, which is fantastic. So here at Hyperthermia Cancer Institute, we provide hyperthermia locally to one or a group of tumors in the same location. And that becomes beneficial for a number of reasons. One, we don't expose the body to very high temperatures. So people may have heard of places that do whole body hyperthermia. I could tell you that those places are not FDA approved and it is not safe to heat your entire body to 109 degrees. If we can get patients relatively early in their diagnosis, they come often diagnosed with a curable lesion. Well, we can help the odds to cure that lesion. The other patient profile that we can really do some good with is a patient who has locally advanced disease. And if they're getting chemotherapy, radiation, or sometimes both, depends on the tumor type, we can then make those therapies work better and potentially cure that patient who's much harder to cure than a patient with a single tumor. Finally, for patients who have stage four cancer, and that is cancer that has spread to distant organs. We can target either the largest of the tumors or a tumor that's threatening a vital organ and give therapy just to that tumor, again, sparing the rest of the body and allowing the chemotherapy, which they're typically receiving if they have stage four cancer, to penetrate that tumor better and work better. And so if we can preserve that organ, or if we can help decrease that very large tumor even more, then we are a part of the puzzle that's getting that patient farther down the field to be able to take advantage of all of the innovations that are coming. So recognizing that no treatment is without side effects, hyperthermia is generally pretty gentle. Uh, we've had thousands of treatments and very few cases of blistering um, typically goes away and we're able to work around that. Most of the other side effects are one-off or location specific. So for example, if we're heating directly over the stomach, some patients may feel some nausea. If we are heating the liver, most patients uh, do just fine and don't really feel any discomfort. Anywhere you can get a diagnostic ultrasound, we can treat you. And so we do have some limitations. So although we can treat almost any solid tumor, if you have a lung tumor that goes up against the wall of the chest, I could treat that tumor. If there's a central lung tumor, that tumor we can't really treat because every time an ultrasound wave hits air, it stops. In addition, if you have a tumor inside of your skull, because bone tends to be a heat sink, we could treat a bone metastasis to the skull. But unfortunately, we can't treat a brain tumor per se that's inside of the skull. So having explained that, I think 
The simplest thing for a patient to do is, regardless of the tumor type that you have, please call us. Believe me, we only want to treat patients who we can help. I'll give you an example. Somebody is unfortunate and has a central lung cancer, but they have a metastasis somewhere else. Well, we could probably treat that metastasis if it's not within their lung, if it's in some other organ. And so again, it's best for the patient to call us, we'll work with them, and we'll only use hyperthermia if it's appropriate. If the underlying therapy is working, we are extremely likely to make that therapy work better. Now, that's gonna span the gamut, right? So there are, on occasion, cases where the chemotherapy or the radiation therapy doesn't work as well as the oncologist or radiation oncologist would like. But in the vast majority, uh, they work to a larger or a lesser degree. And so we're able to help the majority of patients that walk through that door.